I begin in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. All praise be to Him, the sustainer and the container, the one who has created us. I begin in His name and I send my peace and blessings upon Muhammad and his holy progeny. And I send my condolences to the Imam of my time, Sahib al Asri was Zaman. May Allah hasten his reappearance on the tragic martyrdom of his mother, Lady Fatima, peace be upon her. My dear brothers and sisters, tonight we continue our journey. We continue our journey in speaking about my Lady Fatima, peace be upon her. We continue our journey in narrating her merits and manaqib. And soon, insha'Allah, we will get to the oppression that Sayyidah Fatima, peace be upon her, faced. I will now begin by reciting the beginning of the verse from the holy chapter in the Quran, the night of the divine decree. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, the most beneficent, the merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. Laylatul qadr khayrun min alf shahr. Sadaqallahu al-aliyu al-azim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his holy Quran, that indeed we have sent it, meaning the Qur'an, on the night of divine decree. We have sent it on this holy night, Laylatul Qadr. And this night is more better and is worth more than a thousand other nights. Meaning one night in Laylatul Qadr, these small hours in Laylatul Qadr, after Al-Maghrib, when the believers, the mu'mineen, the ibad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gather in the mosques, gather in their centers, gather in the religious organizations, the Husseiniyat. They begin to recite Dua Abu Hamza al-Tumali. They begin to do tawassul to Ahl al-Bayt alayhum salam They begin to do tawassul to my lady Fatima al-Zahra, peace be upon him. Tonight, before we enter the manaqib of Sayyidah Fatima, I want to tell my dear viewer, I want to tell my dear viewer that no matter what I narrate to you concerning the merits and the status of Lady Fatima, peace be upon her, I will never have given my Fatima her due right. I will never be able to give my Fatima, peace be upon her, her due right. My dear brothers and sisters, this feeble mind, this feeble mind, this fallible mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me, this mind cannot comprehend, it cannot have an omniscient understanding, it cannot have a cognizant understanding of Sayyidah Fatima, peace be upon her. Why? This is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorified be He, has contained the ma'rifah, the understanding, the full understanding of Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her, in between the small boundary. Now, before I prove this claim, I will narrate to you a hadith that will aid this claim. The claim that I will make right now is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this boundary that He has instilled between these three, between Allah, the Apostle of Allah, and Ali ibn Abi Talib, and the daughter of the Apostle of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put a boundary and limitations upon me, the Abd, the slave of Allah, in understanding the ma'rafa of these four and the Ahlul Bayt, the Ma'sumi. There is a hadith, the masdar for the hadith is the following Al Muhtadar of Al Hassan ibn Sulaiman al Hilli, Ta'wil al Ayat, and as well found in Mashariq Anwar al Yaqeen. This hadith is mashur. Rasulullah, peace be upon him, and his holy family says, Ya Ali, la ya'rifaka illa Allah wa ana. Ya Ali, no one knows you, true ma'rifa, true understanding, except Allah and I. And then he continues and says, Ya Ali, and no one knows Allah's true understanding and ma'rifa, except me and you. And no one knows me, Ya Ali, except Allah and you. Here you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sorry, here you see that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has put a boundary, a limitation upon understanding the ma'rifah of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And I say that Fatima al-Zahra 
peace be upon her, is included in this small limitation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed. Allah has a domain. It's almost like when you do mathematics and you place a set of numbers and you say that X only spans from zero to five. Well, the understanding and the ma'rifah of Fatima al-Zahra and Ali ibn Abi Talib and Rasulullah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been spanned only between these three. They know each other. So the pe person right now might say, or the viewer might ask me, what does this hadith have to do with Fatima al-Zahra, peace be upon her? I will get you the sources for my claim, of course. You see, we have a hadith. This hadith can be found in the Amali of Shaykh al-Saduq as well in his Ma'ani al-Akhbar as well as in his Ilal al-Shara'i. This hadith has been narrated by Shaykh al-Saduq in his Isnad and you can find this hadith in the book. I'll give you the, uh, the source of the hadith. The hadith can be found where? It can be found in Bihar al-Anwar al-Allam al-Majlisi in the chapter that talks about Sayyida Fatima, which is volume 43. Volume 43 is specifically made or specifically compiled by Al-Allam Al-Majlisi concerning Fatima al-Zahra. The hadith is narrated by Yunus ibn Dayban. Yunus, what does Yunus say? He said, my master Abu Abdullah Ja'far ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq, peace be upon him, said to me. You see, it's important to note here that Imam al-Sadiq, he's the one who began the conversation. He just, he saw, he saw Yunus and he began his conversation. It's important. This means that the Imam, peace be upon him, wants to get a message across. What is this message? He says, my mother Fatima, peace be upon her, has nine names. These names are Fatima, Siddiqa, Mubaraka, Zakiya, Radiya, Radiya, Muhaditha, and Zahra. Again, it is Fatima, Siddiqa, Mubaraka, Tahira, Zakiya, Radiya, Mardiya, Muhaditha, and Zahra. Then the Imam asks a question. The narrator says, He says, Do you know what Fatima means? He said, Ya ibn Rasulullah, you're the one who, are, who is A'lam. You're the one who knows this answer, not I. He begins to tell him. He says, Fatima to Zahra, the meaning behind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, naming Fatima, Fatima, he says, لِأَنَّهَا فُطِمَتْ مِنَ النَّارِ He says that she has been weaned from the fires of hell. Now, a proper way to translate this, of course, I gave you the literal translation, but, but Imam al-Sadiq, peace be upon him here, is trying to tell you, trying to tell the world, trying to tell his Shia, that by him saying weaned from the fires of hell means Sayyidah Fatima is purified by Allah. Sayyidah Fatima is purified and safeguarded and protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This here, it can be connected to the ayah in the Quran, verse 33, chapter 33, Surah Al-Ahzab, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّمَا يَرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيَذْهَبَ عَنْكُمْ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O people of the household, I wish to purify you through purification here in the Quran. This here is in addition to the name of Fatima alayhi salam. Futimat min al sharr Futimat min al nar Another hadith, before I continue, Fatima al Zahra also has another beautiful narration. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fatamaha wa fatama shi'atuha min al nar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has weaned her and weaned her Shia. In one hadith, her Shia, in another hadith, her followers. The hadith says that Fatima al Zahra on the day of judgment will pick out her lovers, the ones that love her, and pick out her Shia like a bird comes to feed its infant. This is how Fatima al Zahra, peace be upon her, on the day of judgment will interact with her Shia. Let us continue the hadith so we get to Mahal al-Shahid, the point where we want to narrate to you guys. You see, Imam al-Sadiq after giving us the name of Fatima, he says, he says that she has been weaned from the fires of hell. Then he says, if the commander of the faithful, peace be upon him, had not married Fatima to Zahra, there would not be a spouse equal like him 
from the beginning of time, from Adam until the Day of Judgment. What does this mean? Meaning the only person who can be an equal to Fatima to Zahra, to be able to be a spouse for her, to be able to marry her is Amir al-Mu'mineen and Mawla al-Mawahideen Ali ibn Abi Talib Salamullahi alayhi. This is important. This aids what? This aids the fact that we cannot truly comprehend Fatima. So when we say who is Fatima, we can barely give, we can give you merely a scratch on the surface, an introduction. But of course, this introduction raises us step by step until we reach a higher position in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us continue. Let us give you another hadith. And this hadith is the main point of this speech today. This hadith is the main point of this episode today. The hadith is found in Tafsir Furat ibn Ibrahim al-Kufi. He says, Imam al-Sadiq, peace be upon him, began to read, Inna anzalnahu fi laylat al-Qadr. He said, indeed, we have sent it down on the night of divine decree. Then he said that the night of divine decree, he says, the night is Fatima, the decree is Allah. Hence, he, hence he who grabs an omniscient understanding of Fatima to Zahra has understood Laylatul Qadr. Fatima, Imam Sadiq salam says that if you want to understand Laylatul Qadr, then you must understand Fatima to Zahra because there is secret here going on. There is a connection, a comparison between say the Fatima, peace be upon her, and Laylatul Qadr. Then he says, Fatima was called Fatima لأن الخلق فطموا عن معرفتها. Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her, was called Fatima because all of Allah's creations have been severed, severed from attaining an omniscient, cognizant understanding of Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her. In another hadith narrated by Imam al-Baqir, peace be upon him, with the same madmoon in the beginning, the same context but an addition. Imam al-Baqir said, listen, listen to this, prophethood, nubuwa, is incomplete for every prophet until he testifies his devotion and love and acknowledges and confirms her merits. A condition, a condition for prophethood is that the Prophet shows affection to Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her. A condition for a prophethood is that he testifies of her merit, her merit amongst all the women, that she is the lady of all women, the lady of all universes. Then he says, Fatima was called Fatima. He finishes the hadith. Then he says, Fatima, he is Siddiqatul Kubra. She is al Siddiq al Kubra, the grand, chaste, pure maiden. Then he says, and those attempting to, to, to attain a cognizant understanding of Fatima to Zahra have been left in confusion since the beginning of time. Habibi, you try to understand Fatima to Zahra, all that you will under, understand, you'll, you'll try to get confused. So never say, never say, I know Fatima. Because if you say, I know Fatima, it means you have committed a crime against Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her. You have committed a crime against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because nobody understands Fatima to Zahra but the small, limited boundary that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed. You see now, you see, I, I, I merely gave you this message so that you, my dear viewer, would understand that what I am giving to you is purely taqsir on my part. All I am trying to do is raise you in a little bit of understanding of Fatima, a little bit of steps towards understanding Fatima, so that when you hear the tragedy of her behind the door and the nail, you'll become even closer and closer and say, how did they do this to my lady Fatima, peace be upon her. Now, since we have some time left, we will narrate to you some comparisons by the ulama that have been made for Laylatul Qadr and Fatima to Zahra. And inshallah, we will conclude with these comparisons and I will read to you the nusus from the text itself. The first one, everything in this vast universe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a space and time. 
on the coordinate system set forth, we have an X, Y, Z coordinate and then we have a coordinate of time. This is called the space-time continuum. The space and time continuum is known and everything must require a space and a time. You see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down the Quran at a specific time period. A specific time period on a specific night. You see here, what is it? What do they say? What does the scholars say? They say the night of divine decree is a specific limited time period for the revelation of the Holy Quran. Falsehood does not come to it. Everything is in it. All truth and all events are in the Quran. Then he says, the same with Lady Fatima, peace be upon her. The same is with Lady Fatima, the pure, chaste lady. Her heart is the space, is the location. She is the vessel of she is the vessel of the divine message. She was a muhaditha whom used to speak to the angels, which makes her the vessel, the container, and the receptacle that holds the divine message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran al Kareem. Zamani and Makani. Laylatul Qadr is the Zaman and Fatima is the Makan. Laylatul Qadr is the time period and Fatima to Zahra'i, peace be upon her, is the actual time. Because she lives through us today until the end of time. What completes Laylatul Qadr is Fatima to Zahra'i, peace be upon her. Second point Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Al Dukhan, verse number four. وَفِيهَا يُفْرَقَ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says on that night is made distinct every precise matter. The scholars say everything on this night until the next fiscal year on the same night is decided on this night. All events are written and the Ruh Al-Qudus, the Holy Spirit, descends on the master of our time. Descends on the master of our time and without the Imam there is no creation and on this night everything descends upon the Imam of our time. You see, everything is made clear on the Yat al-Qadr and when everything comes to the Mas'ala of Fatima to zahra when you begin to ask questions about Fatima to zahra peace be upon her, like Laylat al-Qadr, when Laylat al-Qadr clears up everything for the Imams, Fatima to Zahra'i, peace be upon her. When you come to her, you find the distinction between falsehood and truth. Why? What does the poet say? The poet says that you gave your ribs for the wilaya of Haydar. Ya Fatima, you are the first Rafadiyya. Because Fatima to Zahra'i, peace be upon her, is the one who stood in the face of justice, injustice, and tyranny. And oppression. She was the first to give from herself and sacrifice herself for Imam. Henceforth, in Fatima to Zahra, like Lilatul Qad, where everything is made clear and distinct, Sayyidah Fatima, peace be upon her, everything is made clear and distinct. No questions asked. A perfect similarity, a perfect comparison between the two. Thirdly, he says, on the night of the divine decree is the ascension of the prophets and patrons of Allah. They ascend to gain knowledge, knowledge from the divine. The same goes with the wilaya, the divine covenant of Allah, of Lady Fatima, peace be upon her. She is the vessel that the prophets and patrons of Allah have to testify before becoming a prophet, as the hadith of Imam al-Baqir, peace be upon him. They have to testify to the greatness of Fatima and the merit of Fatima before they can be called a prophet. It says again, it says she holds the secret of Allah, the knowledge of Allah, the vessel of Allah, His Lady Fatima. She is the rope between prophethood and imama, divine authority and leadership. Her father is the apostle of Allah, her husband is the divine representative of Allah, and her sons from her dhurriya, from her dhurriya, from her progeny is the imams of the holy household. Beautiful distinction. 
Beautiful distinction. Number four, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran. He states saying, Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alf shahr. And, and on the days of Laylatul Qadr, your ibadah is multiplied, your ruku' multiplied, your sujood multiplied, your supplication multiplied, everything you do is multiplied by a thousand. Now when we come to the tasbih of Sayyidah Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her, your tasbih that you do and after your obligatory prayer and after your recommended nafila prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplies your your, your hasanat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplies your hasanat. Your prayer is multiplied. Same way as in Nayat al-Qadr, everything is multiplied. You see, this is the greatness of Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her, and Laylatul al-Qadr. You see, we have many more distinctions. We have many more secrets between Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her, and Laylatul al-Qadr. 1,000 blessings here and 1,000 blessings attained. Go read the ruwayat. Read the ruwayat of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, and you will see. Anzalnahu fi Laylatul Mubarakah, one of the kunia, the epitomes of Fatima al Zahra, as Al Mubarakah. Time is not on our side, and we wish to tell you more, and inshallah, in the future, we will tell you more. But the comparison between Fatima al Zahra and Laylatul Qadr is one of the secrets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we await Imam Al Mahdi, peace be upon her, just like Fa just like Layat Al Qadr is three nights, and it's known, it's it's actual day is majhul and unknown. Fatima al Zahra, the day of her death is majhul and unknown, and her grave is majhul and unknown. Peace be upon you, my lady Fatima. Peace be upon you, my master. Peace be upon you, and insha Allah, Allah hastens your reappearance to come and show us the grave of my lady Fatima. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.